Which hat's the last of the jumble? Now, is everybody ready? Yeah, almost. Look, I can easily wait for Carol myself if that's what's bothering you, Mena. No, I'll do it. As long as she turns up, I don't want to miss the whole day. She'll be here by lunchtime. Right, all set. Oh, thanks. Listen, are you going to have enough? Yeah, plenty. And with that windsurfing prize, we could draw a little extra. Oh, that was very nice of Finn. Seems mm -hmm. a, a decent enough lad. Oh, I'm sure Tiffany would agree with that. Got himself a woman, has he? I'm my own woman, Alan. And besides, I'm probably too much for any one man. Don't you think? No luck with the new gamekeeper yet. I can't believe Morag taking offence so readily. I've got that Trafalgar party back at the end of the month. I'm going to have to compensate them somehow for last week's fiasco. I really wish I could help you. <sighs> She's not staying overnight, is she? It's a weight off my mind, Michael. Laurie's great with babies, and it leaves me free to get on with the gala day. I really want to make a success of this day. Well, I can't see it being anything else, given the whole village will be there. Don't give me a bad time, eh? Look, you've got a bus coming from Drumshinnan. Yeah, and how do I explain to them that nobody from my own parish is attending? People will come, you'll see. I'm sure Mr Lapita will be most impressed. Right then. Gala day, here I come. Okay. Okay, I'll uh, see you when you get there, okay? All right. Mm. Here. Bye-bye. Mm. You put that man down, you never know where he's been. <laughs> you told me I was the only man in your life to. Check, you are. Eric's kiss is purely platonic. Oh. Maybe I better run my wee Geiger counter over you then. <laughs> you are after something. Joanne, <laughs> are you saying I just love you for your bacon rolls? Oh. One or two. <laughs> CC Services, how can I help you? Garden Pass, madam. A speciality. Oh, we've got several award-winning designs that you could choose from. 27 Argyle Place. Oh, I'll find it. No, Mrs McLean, no. Oh, hi. Free estimates are part of the company policy. OK. Thanks for calling. Bye. Uh, <clears throat> okay. You need an office and a secretary, Chick. No, no, Eric. All I need is my expertise and a bag of tools. Offices and secretaries are just add to the customers' bills. Hmm. And knowing the generosity of the people of Glendarroch, and given that this event is in such a good cause, I'm sure the day will be a great success. So, without further ado, I've got great pleasure in pronouncing this gala day open! Look at them. Claiming peasants. They tug their forelocks to an old goat if it had the red accent. Come on. Talking of old goats. Come on. Morag. Hello. Hi, David. Hi. How are you? And apart from being unemployed. I heard. Well, to tell you the truth, it came as a relief. I should never have taken a job in the first place. Never mind, you give it your best shot. Don't talk to me about shot. I'm still trying to figure out how I managed to mix up those cartridges. And I reckon things are going to get worse before they get better. No, no. no don't you worry about that, love. No, there's no hidden costs. You've got Chick Cherry's word in that, and that's a guarantee. Oh, well, that's not a problem either. No, if that's the only time it suits you, we'll fit you in then. OK, thanks for calling. You have a nice day. Yeah, I thought there was supposed to be a recession on. How do you do it? I just put it down to good looks and charm. Oh, <laughs> well, I doubt even with your charm you'll find enough work in Glendarroch. Well, don't you believe it, Joanna? You see, we places like Glendarroch, there's always a dearth of good tradesmen. Like yourself? <laughs> well, as my granny used to say, bum away, cos you're bummed your own. Right, I could see me setting up here. Well, do you know something? We've got um, a slight problem with our fireplace. This one over here? Uh -huh. Well, I'll have you put your sook at it. Great. Let's see if I can do anything for you. Oh, it's a... 
That's a bit dodgy. Mm. Is that is that going to be a big job to repair? To a man of my calibre, a dodo. Well, but the only thing is, you know, I couldn't have men in during normal hours. Well, that's not a problem either. I'll come in tonight after closing. Oh, chick, brilliant, thanks. But you'd have to provide a bed, though. Pardon? Well, an empty couch would do. You see, my digs are on the other side of Ochtarn, John, and. The landlady's a wee bit old-fashioned. I don't think she'd fancy me traipsing in the middle of the night. All right. Um, well, uh, there's a spare staff room empty, but it's really basic. Well, that'll do nicely. You sure? <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll even knock the price of a full breakfast off your bill. Mr. Ross to be sold out by his own wife. I have to agree with you there, Mrs. Marker. Meaning no disrespect to the minister's wife. It wasn't very considerate. Not considerate. Bare-faced disloyalty, I call it. Aye, perfidious. Mrs. Woods, thank you for coming. I won't die in God's house, Minister. I'd much rather be at the gala day. Is this the genuine article? Sure is. Royal Strathfruin, if that's how you pronounce it. One of the finest single malt whiskies ever to delight the palate. Oh, no. Kindly denoted by Mrs. McTaggart. Lucky old bag. She found a hoard of it in her loft and made a fortune out of it. She must have it so rare. All this for one pound and uh, possibly a little bit of luck. Do you? With my luck, I'll probably drop it. I'll take five on. Oh, good. Ha! Couldn't have had a coup in the tail with a banjo. Have you any single notes, Grace? I've run out again. Change, must change to singles. Oh! You must be doing a roaring trade with the baking, Mary. Mm -hmm. 36 pounds already. We... Thir we haven't taken 36 shillings yet. Is it any wonder? Have you seen this raspberry jam? And just what is wrong with my raspberry jam? How's it going? Great. We're very hopeful of a large amount. Regardless, I'll still double whatever it amounts to. Sam, that is so generous. We're desperate for a new cooker. And I caught wouldn't go on this either. Oh, Morag! Look, just one moment, Susan. Look, um, I was just wondering. Now that you've had a few days to, um... Calm down. I was going to say, think things over. I was very cross. I noticed. Well, perhaps I spoke a little hastily. Well, you spoke the truth and that always hurts, doesn't it? You were doing so well. I was being well coached. Coached? Davy Snedden gave me a few pointers, or at least... He put me straight, but I might have made a fool of myself. David Snedden. <sighs> well, that's as maybe. The fact of the matter is, I need you back. Desperately. Yeah. What you need desperately is a gamekeeper, and I'm not up to it. But more No. The person you need, whether you like it or not, is Davy Snedden. I was thinking, at this rate, I'd be as well catching the lunchtime bus back to Edinburgh. Now who's being disloyal? Oh, no, no, if I just you thought... walk out of this church, Obadiah oh, Mark, I'll never <clears> speak <throat> to you again. <clears throat> I, uh, I know we're small in number, but let me remind you of Jesus' words to his disciples. When more than one are gathered together in my name. Oh, Mr. Lafferty. Thank you, Lord. I'm very sorry we're late, Minister. Have we uh, stopped the right date? We've, um, had a clash of dates, so to speak. A garden party organized by the minister's wife herself, no less. In direct competition. What kind of party? Oh, come on, you can do a bit on that. Try again, it's for a good cause. 
What are you doing? You're supposed to stay behind the line. But, uh, I can't hit you from back there. Yeah, that's the idea. Oh. <laughs> that's cheating. Never mind. It's in a good cause. Well, kids, step right up. You'll never get a better chance to stick one on the fuzz. <laughs> <laughs> And a tastier sort of raspberry jelly you'll not find in this village. I've said I'm sorry, Jean. Here she's at it again. And this a family day out. How many men is that, she said? I've lost count. I'm surprised Susan Ross allowing it. And she's dragging them in now. What kind of massage did you say it was again? Facial. What? Facial, you know. And how would anybody pay good money to have their faces rubbed? Right, that's me. I'm off. Give me a minute, man. I'm only just in the door. So the rush in. I mean, it's on all day. Yeah, well, the rush is. I promised Tiffany I'd give her a hand. Oh, hard. What's that supposed to mean? The one that came for a flying visit and crashed on top of Isabel? I mean, do you not really think that Isabel's got enough on her plate? If Tiffany's outlasted her welcome, that's what Isabel to say. Mm, well, it's not always easy to tell an unwelcome guest that they're not wanted. Oh, well, you should know. Me? Well, I'm sure Isabel would rather have Tiffany crashing in on her than that old bat, Mrs Mack. Hurry along now, and I want to see you all spending well. <laughs> well, I must say, Minister, I'm not at all happy about our day of prayer being cut short. Nonsense, Mrs Mack. The work of the Lord goes on outside the church, too. Oh, Michael! Mrs. Ross, I presume. Mr. Lafferty thought his group should be at the gala day. Well, we couldn't let such a worthy cause go unsupported. I'm delighted. Personally speaking, I think this is much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Mack, did the prayer meeting finish early? It's just as well it did, by the look of things. I'll have you know, Isabel Morgan, I paid more for that chair when I bought it 30 years ago. Oh, well, uh, that's the point, Mrs. Mack. It's, it's seen better days. Look, it may look old, but the fact it's in pristine condition testifies that this is a quality item. Oh, I can see that I'm going to have to lend a hand here. No, really, Mrs. Mack, there's no need. Look, if this gala day is to be a success, then Mrs. Ross needs all the help she can get. After all, it's for a very good cause. And we just can't have you giving things away at the moment. And the second prize, a windsurfing course on uh, Loch Darach, kindly donated by Mr. Um, Mr. Finn North. And it's ticket number 15, Miss Judith Crombie. <laughs> well done, well done, well done. OK, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. The star prize, generously donated by Mrs. Jean McTaggart. Number 11, Trish McDonald. That's 20 minutes that lad's been in bed. How long does it take to have your face washed? Uh, maybe he's having a bath in it. <laughs> Gee, my tiger. Well, there he is now. Well, whatever way she does it, she's put a smile on that lad's face. <laughs> I hope you're old enough to appreciate what you've got there. Miss? Well, it must be worth something. Had a few offers for it. But you're not selling. Thought I'd just give it to my dad. Oh, promise me one thing. You won't let him add water to it. Or God forbid lemonade. Miss Crombie. I don't suppose you'll be taking Finn's course? <laughs> me on a surfboard? I don't think so. Then would you fancy swapping prizes then? You'd swap that nectar for a soaking in Loch Dan. <laughs> Done. Yes. Yo-ho, Carol, dear! Shh, just put the baby down. Oh, wow. Now, do be careful with that, Mr Mark. Now, I want no argument. I couldn't let it go at the price. He's a wee bit young for it yet. Mrs Mack, 
How many times have I told you? It's a lovely chair, Carol. It doesn't um, matter. I've said it a hundred times. You must stop buying us oh, things. Stop fussing, dear. It's for charity. I'm not a charitable case. So whatever that costs you, you'll take the money for it. I certainly will not, Carol Wilson. It was bought as a gift, and a gift it will be. Otherwise, it would go straight back to where it came from. <sighs> You look exhausted. Yeah, well, I'm pretty pleased with myself. I think I did rather well today. Yes. Who'd have thought so many men from Glendarg would be interested in facial massage? Why not? There's nothing more relaxing. <laughs> well, who minds a bit of gossip for such a good cause? Hmm. You did pretty well yourself, by all accounts. Alan reckons your additional prize brought in quite a bit extra. Hmm? Ladies of all ages falling over themselves to get their hands on your sailboard, <laughs> no doubt. I hear Miss Crombie was the lucky winner. Well, she was, and she wasn't. Apparently, she'd rather have had her hands on a bottle of scotch. Hmm. She swapped her lessons with uh, Trish McDonald. With Trish? Hmm. At Trish's instigation, I'm led to believe. Well, maybe I'll get a return on my investment. If Trish takes it up and spreads the word, I mean. Mm, I believe you. Thousands mm. wouldn't. And maybe Joanna will take me up on my offer of services for a residence. Or uh, maybe I might just set up in the village. I doubt if Glendark is ready for uh, the massage parlour, even of the facial variety. Then why not? Even small villages have to move with the times. Yes, but a gala day is one thing. Somehow I just can't quite see the ladies of Glendark standing still while their men for queue outside your tent for their weekly workout. Then I'll do house calls. Even more dodgy. Why? Wouldn't you like me to come over sometime and ease the stress from your worried brow? Is that an offer? There. Oh, but that's more than double. I've just made it up to the round hundred. It's very magnanimous of you, Sam. And not just the money, the use of the land and all your time and trouble. Well, if you could excuse me, I've got a million things to catch up on. Sure. Oh, no, don't rush up on my account. The work's all done. You stay and enjoy your drink. Take your time. And you deserve it. I'm very proud of you, Susan Ross. And so is everyone in Glendara and Drumshinnin. <laughs> that was a nice bonus, Mr Lafferty turning up with his group. Yeah. I'm sorry. What? I'm crowing, and my gain is your loss. I'm sure God won't be put out. His work goes on outside the church as well as in, you know. And I'm sure he had a wee word in Mr Lafferty's ear on your behalf. I wish he'd have a word in your ear and tell you how much your wife wants to be of use to people, especially her husband. <laughs> he had to shout, but I heard him eventually. Oh, you're not having another cup of tea, are you? Why? Wrong with them? No, I want to go to my bed. I can hardly keep my eyes open. And I thought you'd have been exhausted too. No, no, I'm fine, honestly. Mm. Oh, well, if you're having one, I'll have one. Go in the bedroom? No, no, I'll just take a couple of mouthfuls in here. Oh, well, that was a rare turnout, wasn't it? Nice. Hey. Susan has a, a lot of people to thank, not least Tiffany. Yes, she was more likely to run out of her aromatherapy oils than she was out of customers. Yeah, well, they, they all did well, didn't they? Though I must admit, I was conned into buying the last six jars of Mrs. McTaggart's homemade jam. <laughs> we'll be eating it for the next month. <laughs> did I see you poking your head in her tent? Who's then? The massage parlour. Well, if you did, it was only to get some change. I mean, I didn't have a chance to wet my whistle, let alone have a massage. Yes, it was hectic, wasn't it? Right, I'm not sitting up any longer. Right. You're not waiting up for the girls, are you? Oh, good Lord, no. Goodness knows what time they'll be in. I'll just watch the beginning of this film. You, you, you're going off to bed, love. Yes, I will. When I fall asleep in my foot. Right, thanks. That's time, everybody. I've got turned up, then. You don't see them, do you? 
All right, no need to bite my head off. Oh, why do people tell you they'll be somewhere and then leave you waiting? I oh, know. Just hoping to see Finn myself. I won the windsurfing course at the gala today. I just wanted to talk to him about it. Ah, well, your guess is as good as mine. Oh, I don't think it takes a genius to work out where he is. Finn hasn't turned up. Tiffany hasn't turned up. Hey, you lot, come on. Make room for the workers. Uh, right, Chick, is everything OK for you? Aye, aye, darling. <laughs> just you leave us your Uncle Chick. Right, and if we just leave you with the bar keys, can you lock up when you're finished? Ah, oh, I don't think it should take that long. No, I know, but Eric and I may as well take the opportunity of an early night. No problem, then. I'll just lock up when I'm finished. That's great. Thanks. Sure. Right, I'd better get home. Tiffany will be there by now. <laughs> I doubt it. In fact, you'll be lucky to find Tiffany home before the milkman. See you later. David? Sam Hagen. What? Sam? Do you know what time of night it is, woman? Yes, I do know what time of night it is. And what the hell do you want? What I want is a word. First thing Monday morning, if that suits you. No, it doesn't flame and suit me. And don't call me up at this time of night making demands. If you want to see me on Monday, you can wait until I'm damn well ready. There now. It wasn't all that hard, was it? What is going on? Check. But it's nearly three o'clock. Oh. I travel deep and over the highway. Macalibri. 